Bonjour, mes amis. Hello, my friends. How are you? Comment ça va? Thank you for coming today and welcome back to senior elementary art class. Our lesson today is called Hard, Firm, Soft, and Lost. For today's lesson, you'll need a piece of scrap paper, a piece of drawing paper, a graphite pencil, an eraser, and a ruler. Let's do a quick review on our lesson about shading last week. Artists use a variety of values to create the illusion of light and shadow and add depth to their artwork. This technique is called shading, and like perspective, shading has a first rule. The farther from the light source it is, the darker it looks. Let's start with a little exercise called Valuing My Cue. On a scrap piece of paper, draw a horizon line in the center of your page. Add two vanishing points for two-point perspective, one on each end of the horizon line, just like we did in January. Draw a two-point perspective cube on the lower left side. Try not to make it too small. At the top of your page, draw three small squares with your pencil. Now shade in the middle one with a graphite pencil. Shade the right one lighter. Shade the left one darker. These are going to be your three base tones for shading your cube. Now our light source will come from the upper right for this exercise. You can draw a little light ball like me if you'd like. Now the top plane of your cube is closer to the light source, so shade it with the right lightest value. The right side plane is next closest, so shade it with your mid-tone value. side plane is furthest, so shade it with your darkest plane. While you're shading, notice how I'm holding the pencil. I'm using the side of the graphite tip to shade. This makes it a lot easier to keep the shading even. Or just to erase a few spots where I found that the shading went past my line. So I want you to draw more two-point perspective cubes. Here you're going to see me draw three more. And you'll notice that the planes that get the light mid-tones and dark tone changes once I move the cube above the horizon line.
The more you do this exercise, the easier it becomes to understand how shading works. Now let's talk about edges. While the planes of a shape stay flat, like a cube, then the value stays even on that plane. But what happens when the planes are curved, like a cylinder or sphere? Well, the value becomes a gradient of light to dark as the plane turns away from the light source. When there is a value change, that is called an edge. There are four types of edges, which depend on how quickly the value changes. The first is a hard edge, an instant change from one value to another. This creates a sharp corner, like the corners of the cube. Next is a firm edge, a quick change from one value to another. This creates a rounded corner. Now we have a soft edge, a gradual change from one value to another. This creates a rounded plane, like the planes of a cylinder or sphere. And lastly, we have a lost edge. There is no value change from one plane to another. In this case, the edge of the form disappears. This piece is called The Daughters of Edward Darley Boyd. It's a painting by John Singer Sargent, made with oil paint on canvas, back in 1882. How many hard edges can you find? These are the ones that I found, and they seem to create corners, overlapping edges, and sharp folds in the dresses. How many firm edges can you find? The ones that I found are creating softer folds in the dresses. They're also used to make overlapping edges of less important elements.
many soft edges can you find? The soft edges I found are creating curved surfaces, uh, areas of dimin diminishing light, and edges of cast shadows. They also give the impression of elements in the background. Now let's see if you can find some lost edges in this painting. The ones that I found seem to increase the contrast to help sharper edges stand out and become more noticeable. Our project today is called Edgy Apple. Let's start by drawing the apple. Start with a big circle for your structure. And then we're going to cut off the bottom edge of that and give a little dip on the bottom. I'm also making the top of the circle a little wider to make the shape of the apple. I'm adding a little curve at the top to create a bit of a pit for the stem. I'm erasing any lines I don't need. And lastly, I'm going to add a shadow shape on the bottom. So this starts where the apple touches the surface, and it's moving backwards in space because I'm imagining the light coming from the front. I'm also adding a slight shape for the stem. Now this is rounded, so you don't see the dip that's underneath the apple, because the apple's general shape is round. I want you to start by lightly drawing a curved line from the top left side of the bottom to the bottom right side. This is called the terminator line, and it shows us where the division between the shadow side and the light side of the apple are. Next, you're going to shade in the shadow side of the apple, that's the left side. Now, starting at the bottom left of the apple, by pushing harder on your pencil, darken the shading, and then gently lighten the pressure as you get closer to the terminator line. This is going to make a soft edge gradient around the apple. So do this carefully and just make sure that it looks the way you want it to look. It's got to look like the, the apple is three-dimensional in space. So take your time. And again, I want to let you know that I'm holding the pencil differently to use the side of the graphite tip of the pencil. This makes shading a lot easier. Keep working at it until you get it just right. Remember, this video is sped up. So it, I didn't do it quite this quickly to create the apple. Next, I want you to erase back the terminator line if it is too dark. Now you're going to create a light tone gradient around the light side of the apple. Now that doesn't mean you shade the entire light side. You're going to start light at the terminator line and go darker as you get to the other side. Now you're going to see me shading around the edge of the, the apple as well, because that's actually slightly turned away from the light source, so it is just a little bit darker. Here you can see me adding a dark tone um, to the stem as well as darkening the pit. Because it turns in and away from the light, it's going to be slightly darker. I'm giving a dark turn tone to the stem because ten stems tend to be a darker color than apples are. Now I want you to shade in the shadow of the apple 
with the same darkness you used on the bottom left. This will create a lost edge. Try to make this shading as even as possible. You're going to see me going back and darkening the shadow often enough just to really make it look like a shadow. I'm also trying to flatten it. Like I said, I want the shading to be even, so it needs to be very, very flat. Once you're happy with your shadow, I want you to race back the edge of the shadow to give it a firm edge. Make sure the shadow's ed is, edge is not a hard edge. And now on the opposite, opposite side of the apple, I want you to lightly shade the negative space. What this is going to do is make the apple just pop out a little bit from the background. And you need to make sure to create a hard edge on that side of the apple for this to work. So take your time. Again, this needs to be a pretty even shading. You don't want it to look like there's some kind of shadow back there. And you see, I've darkened the edge there, so in consequence, I'm also darkening the shading. It has to be very, very even. Take your time. Don't hesitate to use your eraser anytime you need it. Thank you, my friends, for joining Senior Elementary Art Class. Merci beaucoup. I'm sure you made some amazing art. I hope you enjoyed your lesson on shading and edges today. Prends soin de vous, take care of yourself, and I will see you next week. Au revoir.